welcome back to a new episode of Couch Critics. Hi guys, we're Couch Critics and today we're reviewing Madame Web. Yes, and we're sorry if the sound is a little bit off today. We just broke our mic. Like it happened five seconds ago. It fell and broke. <laughs> it fell and it shattered <laughs> on the floor. So um, we'll have a new mic next week, but for now, we're just gonna try to speak up. <laughs> yep, yep, we're gonna speak up. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of acting classes. Yes, <laughs> oh, the amount of times I heard, higher your voice, we can't hear you. And I yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it is <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Madame Web. Yes, it? it's it's a, it's partly a Marvel movie. But it's not no. completely a Marvel movie. It's based on the Marvel comics, but it's it's Sony movie. Is it's it? not Marvel Studios, yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's one of the comics characters, but uh, yeah, this one was not done with the Marvel Universe Studios. Okay. But yeah, I think it was Sony, right? Yeah, Sony yeah. Studios. Yeah. Okay. But they were actually associated with Marvel. Yes, so. they were. Mm -hmm. Are you, before we start, like, are you a fan of Marvel? I know you watch I'm them. I'm a Marvel fan. But really? I, yeah. <laughs> I stopped watching, like, the new episodes and the new series and movies after, like, after Endgame because I think that was the first generation of Marvel movies. But back then, like, during the Iron Man days, Thor, Captain America watched all the movies at least three times. I was a wow. huge fan. Still have a few comics in my room. Mm -hmm. I I just love Marvel so much, and uh, yeah. Okay, wow, you're an OG fan. Yeah, this is why I don't know a lot of classical movies because I spent my teenagehood watching Marvel movies. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, I'm not a Marvel fan. Okay. I I feel like it's because I missed out on watching the best ones, and therefore everything that I see now is something that I cannot comprehend. It's something related to the past ones. It's a little more like, it's the, 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 the prequel or the sequel of something that, that is completely unknown to me. So it's impossible for me to understand it. I feel like you should like try to just like do a deep dive into yeah. it some during a month or two. But it is not really my favorite kind of movie, so I'm really not motivated to to watch them. But I mean, I watched Avatar, but I, I don't think it's a Marvel movie. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's pretty close. Science pretty close. close. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Madame Web. Madame Web. Dakota Johnson, Sydney Sweeney, and those are the actors that I know. Oh, Emma was, Roberts? Emma Roberts. <laughs> you know, Emma Roberts in that movie played, you know, she's pregnant? Yeah. Her kid is Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Like, she's pregnant. Really? Peter Parker, yeah. Her, her last name is Parker. Her, she's Mary Parker, and her brother is Ben okay. Parker, who raised Spider-Man. Wow. Yeah, so that's like a little insight into the multiverse, which is... And that's that very crazy. funny. Yeah. See, yeah. this is why I should watch Marvel. Yeah. But I did watch Spider Man with the Tobey Maguire, but oh, yes. um, it, it wasn't a Marvel movie. No, I think it was Sunny as well. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. But I did love Spider Man, the yeah. first one. Um. So Madame Web, it starts with it starts with this lady who works in the Amazon and she does these researches about spiders and she finds a rare one. Also, she's pregnant. Uh, the moment she finds this rare species of spiders, um, her co-worker decides to kill her. She gets saved by those low-cost Spider-Mans. Yeah. This is what, what I choose to call them, the low-cost low spider, spider <laughs> They're called Las Arañas in the movie, because okay. the spiders, because it's in Peru that she was doing her research, and mm. you know, it's basically spiders in, I think, Spanish. Okay, um, I was more referring to the costumes. To me, they look like Spider Man <laughs> with a very low cost budget. Uh, low cost? I low heard cost. Low cost. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they save her, um, they don't save her, but like they help her get, give birth to her daughter, who happens to be uh, the, the, the character that Dakota Johnson's play. And yeah, um, she dies. 
and we follow <laughs> Dakota Johnson. Classical superhero movies yeah. that starts with an orphan, like always. I, I don't Definitely. like that. <laughs> an orphan who randomly discovers that they can see the future and then they discover that they have super powers that can save the world and yeah. Very original. Very original. Yeah. Speaking of the powers, because, mm -hmm. okay, the, I know the movie received a lot of critics and uh, a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. I personally, I really like Dakota Johnson. And this movie? Yeah, I, I really like Dakota Johnson in general, so I feel like no matter what she does, I'm going to be a huge fan of it. But uh, uh, the thing that I didn't like about her superpowers is that I feel like she got them very quick. Like... Even when, because she gets her superpowers after an accident, she's a, uh, she, mm. uh, firefighter? Yeah, she's a firefighter, and, uh, she was saving someone from an, a car accident, like, uh, she was, the car was upside down, she was helping the person get out of the car, and as she helps that person, the car falls off the bridge into the waters, mm. and then she gets saved, and after being saved, because she had a cardiac arrest, that's how she starts having her superpowers. Like she starts yeah. in the future, mm -hmm. and I feel like from the moment she fell in the water, it happened so abruptly. Like I know it's an accident. Yeah. Not so, okay. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing it. But still, I feel like everything happened so fast mm -hmm. in the movie. Like the key moments that were just thrown at us, and we had no like preparation for them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I that she didn't like. That I didn't like about the movie. Okay. But yeah, what did you think of Dakota Johnson in that movie? Um, okay, so my first red flag for this movie was the fact they they cast Dakota Johnson because I feel like, you know, you have these actors, like some actors have this specific casting and they cannot play in some specific movies. And Dakota Johnson, to me, is one of them. To me, she should not play a superhero. She has this very uh, Paul Mescal-like kind of acting. Yeah. It's very precise, it's deep, but at the same time it's it's, it's not fast-paced enough, it's, it's very collected, it's brilliant, but it's also, it demands a certain um, niveau, level of, yeah. of, of brilliance <laughs> that, in order for her to act. And um, Dakota Johnson can do like weird movies and like she can uh, play these very torture, tortured and tormented characters. And how do I know that? I saw her in Suspiria. I don't know if you've ever watched Suspiria, weirdest movie ever. Okay. You don't understand anything about it, but it's brilliant. It has Mia Gott in it. It's it's a horror-ish movie, but it's 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 brilliant. I think it's an A twenty four movie. Which is why it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay, yeah. But yeah, I felt like Dakota was playing a movie on it, on her own, and the other actors were like on a different sphere. Cause the pacing was so out of place with the other characters. At a certain time, they were trying to like uh, be at the same pace as her, but it just did not work. And um, she she just she she was. The worst cast for this role, and it's not her fault. Her acting is great. I love even in like the the, the low cost, uh, low uh, quality movies that she did. I mean, I watch all the Fifty Shades of Grey that she oh, did. Yes. I watch How to Be Single that I love. Yeah, she's I like good in that yeah. movie. Yeah, and um, I did not like her in this movie. She she was so out of place, so almost disoriented, like, I feel like her delivery did not work, but at the same time, I don't know if it's her delivery that did not work, or everyone else's delivery that wasn't working. Okay, I, now that you're saying it, I do agree with you, because mm -hmm. I think that Dakota has a very laid-back um, performance, yeah. like, she's very witty, she's sarcastic, and a very, like, calm way and you know when we're talking about marvel it's always these actors taking yeah. the world and always like their energy is always so high which is not always the case with dakota and her performance so yeah i just mm -hmm. see what you're talking about but i feel like that kind of the performance work towards the end of the movie which i'm not necessarily sure i agree with how it ended but you know when she was in a wheelchair and she couldn't see and like she gave this very wise kind of like the mother of the three kid character 
character, and this is where mm -hmm. her quietness could work a bit better. But yeah, still, um, yeah. I, I did not get to that part because I left early. No, this is <laughs> how much I like this movie. You know, I stopped watching the movie when they got to the flashback, kind of, you know, like the big reveal of her having superpowers when she was with like the low coast spider. <laughs> Like it just, I was on the verge of having an epileptic episode. I don't have epilepsy yet, but it was so badly filmed. It was all this build up to show her as a ghost, uh, finding out that she had superpowers and her reaction about her having a superpower was so deceiving that I just couldn't stay. I had to leave. I, I was like going crazy and I, I just, I couldn't predict the end of like, um, I don't know what happened, but like, I was I was so deceived and I did not like this movie at all. So um, I left. <laughs> I did one good thing for myself and I left. <laughs> but you know, like, like okay, this is on the side. But I spent this week watching what it's like to watch uh, perfect writing and perfect acting take place on the screen. And what I mean by that is that I spent the week watching Grey's Anatomy. And to me, Grey's Anatomy is the definition of what it's like to have brilliant screen screenwriters work for you. And so, for me to go from that to Madame Web was 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 insane. I just I can't <laughs> see. That's that's also something I wanted to say because it's Marvel, it's Sunny, like it's those big companies. What about writing? Like you have a reputation, especially yeah. Marvel. They have. Uh, they used to at least have a reputation for great movies and great writing and great scripts mm -hmm. and now you're doing movies like this with like such um, like such terrible writing <laughs> bad writing <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was very disappointing because again I'm a huge Marvel fan and it breaks my heart to see how they're just delivering so many movies and so many TV shows but they're not as well written as the ones they used to be before like back in the days they used to have three movies a year but the three movies would be iconic and now yeah. they have so so many tv shows so many movies and i know they're trying to be franchise and everything but i feel like there's so much not everybody has the time to watch all of it mm -hmm. and because they're separating their energy and their time and i know they're a big company and they can hire many many people but still it's not going to be the same as just focusing on three movies yeah. making them great and just letting it be so yeah i do agree with you in terms of writing i was very disappointed and you know what disappointed me the most is you don't know that because you didn't make it to the end of the movie but it's actually something you didn't miss you know basically the three girls are supposed to have superpowers right yeah and you see them in the beginning of the movie yeah. fighting this guy what do you expect to have like what do you expect to happen by the end of the movie to turn into superheroes yes they don't they don't. They okay. don't have superpowers. Nothing. It's just mad and Web saving them. They're just like normally fighting. It's four girls fighting a guy with superpowers. And you know, they sure Mad and Web can see the future. So she uses that to win. But we don't see them having their superpower and superpowers. And it's funny because I watched an interview with Sydney mm -hmm. Sweeney and she said, Oh yeah, I loved shooting this movie. I asked them I want it to be upside down because that's the character. And I thought that we're gonna have more like superpowers in these movies. Yeah, we're gonna see her. That was just in one scene that she was upside down. And in her interview, she said, "Oh yeah, I spent the whole movie uh, being upside down." And I was I kept waiting for that moment to see the girls were fighting with their superpowers. We didn't see that. Yeah, um, it's just <laughs> like there is the a huge... key element of the movie was missing. There is like huge internal. Uh, problems that this production has and the first one is is the script the script does not make sense it is poorly written and and i don't know see like yesterday i was thinking about this and i was like what is the problem that we have today with movies because like 90 percent of the movies that we watch are terrible they're, they're commercial movies but they're terrible they suck it's the truth the bar is so low that it is almost insulting to us as viewers and um i don't know what the problem is is it that 
writers nowadays lack imagination. They, they stopped asking themselves the what if question that leads you to a great perhaps. And what I mean by that is that when you're writing something, you should be curious, you should ask yourself, what if this character does this? And then you elaborate on that. Or is it the opposite? Is, is it that writers are asking too many what ifs and when they're writing the script and it's almost this this unrealistic even if we're talking about a marvel movie but it's not relatable and this is what makes a movie work to me is the fact that you you can relate to it um whether it's something whether it's a cartoon or like a real human that you're watching yeah. in, on screen and also i feel like the reason why we don't like these kind of movies nowadays is because we have a saturation of superheroes movies and we are just sick of seeing people have super human powers and like just it, it's it's not relatable anymore it used to be in the past but it's not what we want to see right now is antagonists it's it's like the original villain story of someone we want to see someone real bad go on yeah. a, like a good direction and yeah. and these movies they work like I'll just give a few examples. Maybe have you seen Cruella? Yes, I, I was thinking of it. This Cruella, was the, um, J the Joker. Yeah, um, we want to see more movies like that. It's so much more interesting, and it's something that's not overly saturated yet. And I feel like Marvel should lean more towards these kind of characters. They are doing that. They did that with Loki, and I'm pretty sure they did that with a few other um, anti-heroes. But the problem is, you know, if you're doing that, focus on that and focus yeah. just on that. Don't go out there making both because you're just gonna miss the shot in both, in my opinion. But yeah. And also, you talked about Sydney Sweeney. Um, I cannot, I, I cannot stand Sydney Sweeney anymore on, during interviews because I feel like her marketing technique doesn't work anymore. I would much rather see a Dakota, a Dakota Johnson who is not very enthusiastic about what she did. Like she, she looks like someone who does a nine to five and just goes home <laughs> and forgets about it. But it's so it sets the expectations for mm -hmm. the viewers because when I see Dakota Johnson, I don't have this huge expectation of what the movie is like. With, and then I go into the movie, and if it's good, then it exceeds my expectations, and it's it's great. And if it's bad, then I'm prepared for it. Whereas when you see Sydney Sweeney, first of all, I hated everything that she did with the promo of uh, anything about you because it's it's all based on a lie, and you you're playing with the chemistry that you have with the, your co-star on set, and it's something that actors used to do in the past you, you'd read about it it's on tabloids and everything but again it's it just shows that it's you're not a professional and i would much rather see two actors have this huge chemistry on screen and then when you see them together they're very professional they know how to mm -hmm. keep it together rather than see two people lying and then like she goes to to do the promo of the other movie and say yeah it's the greatest movie ever and then you don't know which movie was the greatest <laughs> ever and you go to these movies and you're like no they're not that great and you don't believe the actor anymore and you, her acting is great she's probably the best performer on this movie on madame web but um i just cannot watch her interviews anymore you know the problem is that sometimes it's not the actors who go like who say these things they just have a huge team behind all of these movies pushing them mm. towards something but i completely get your point yeah. yes i totally agree and i feel like trying to sell your personal life in order to sell a movie just lowers the value of the movie because yeah. why would you need to sell a story that's happening behind the scenes mm. if the movie is already a good movie you wouldn't need to do that exactly yeah yeah um also the movie was supposed to set in 2003 yeah i mean <laughs> it is it is terrible the way that they set up the mood and the ambiance for that like the only thing that they used and the only thing that showed that it was in 2000 filmed in 2003 publicity of beyonce and the was songs. the publicity of beyonce <laughs> and the, the the fact that they 
had like one or two songs of Britney Spears, but Toxic came out in 2004. It did not come really? out. Really? Yeah, I looked it up during the movie because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and it didn't come out in 2003. The reason why they wanted the movie to come out in 2003 is because the first Spider Man and the newer version was filmed, I think, in 2017, and okay. Peter Parker was 15. So they wanted like the timeline to make sense. But yeah, it did not feel like it was 2003. And that's very disappointing because I just finished watching Griselda, as I was telling you, and that that series sets is set in 1978. And one of the things I love most about that TV show is the set design, mm -hmm. the cars, the houses. You watch that movie and you feel like, yes, you are in the 70s. And again, for big companies like Sony and Marvel, I mean, the least you could do is adapt the, the fashion, the clothes, all of it, the sets, to 2003, especially that the Y2Ks yeah, are totally. trending right now, yeah. so how hard, I don't know. Also, um, like you could adapt your cinematography and, and your lenses and the colors that you use for the movie. Like if you take any movie that came out in the early 2000s, none of them look the way that this movie looked. Yeah. I'm not talking about the content, just the looks. When you see the colors, when you see the quality of this movie, it is too developed, it is too bright, it is too 2025, 2024. Yeah, 24. <laughs> I don't know which years we are. <laughs> 2024. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and speaking of marketing, we were talking about marketing earlier. Um, did you see the Pepsi marketing in this movie? Uh, yeah, so she had a Pepsi. Where else was there a Pepsi? Julian, uh, the birthday with yeah. Emma yeah. Roberts. Um, I like I Why could not still promoting this focus brand? on anything besides that Pepsi can during that entire scene because she would be like this, this, <laughs> this. She would try to open it and then like she wouldn't and she would try again and she wouldn't open the Pepsi and the Pepsi just kept going like this, 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 this. So imagine if we did the podcast like this. It, it's just so weird. And yeah, like it. <laughs> no, I get it. Wow. I get it. Also, why are we still promoting these ones? I don't know. Like, I feel, I don't know. I feel like they're it's too big. But we need to go back to promoting local brands, or to start promoting local. We brands. We should stop Smaller promoting brands. brands in movies. I mean, you should do it very discreetly. Small, discreetly. Um, like if people like the movie and identify with those characters, they will look up the brands because that's the closest thing that will get them to to, to, to this character. This is how they will feel close to them. But um, if, if you don't put all of your efforts in the development of the, these characters, like people won't get attached to them and therefore they will try to mimic them and to, to, to do the same things as them. I want to talk about the like the shots basically because you were talking oh, yeah. about the, yeah, the shots. I got vertigo, like a vertical vitality. I You're referring I, to the first ones, right? Yes, I had what what's it called? I had whiplash just <laughs> watching at the cameras turn like this and like go in. and I'm like, yes, sure, incredible technology, great shot, but who is watching these shots? Like I closed my eyes so many times because I was getting dizzy watching the shots. <laughs> And also the the special effects. There mm. was uh you know the one time where she got out like what the scene where you left where she <laughs> yeah. actually fell in the water yeah. and reconnected with her past. That had such a uh, Doctor Strange, which is another Marvel movie. I watched but Doctor Strange. Love it. Yeah. But you know, in Doctor Strange, when the character gets out of his body and like goes somewhere else, it's it's a shocking experience for yeah. the character. He was shocked. Whereas in this one, she just like fell in the water. We didn't know if she actually fell or if it was like a spiritual experience or whatever. And I'm like, you're doing so many special effects, but like, why? Give it meaning, give it like, give it context. Let us know what's happening. And I feel like right now the technologies are being so developed that people are doing so much with them with no reason. Like if we can do something, doesn't mean we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Just. Take no, I get what you're saying. Also, yes. speaking of the lenses and the, the camera work, um, there was like this weird zoom where, like, in the beginning of the movie, they would like 
pick up a character and they would zoom on their face and it looked like a National Geographic documentary. <laughs> and um, it was like, like the only thing that I keep thinking is that I, as a person, normal person, don't even zoom like this on my friends because it's offensive. So why are you zooming on the actors? It's like if you choose this style of, of uh, filming, which is very original, you have to like stick to it for the entire movie. You don't choose that for like five minutes of the movie because it, like it looks like an experimental movie. Yeah, it's like someone took a camera and tried different like clicked on so many. It, it's like me trying to film a movie. <laughs> So that first movie I've never first held a camera before and this is what I imagine I, like what I would do if I had a camera like I would just zoom into people's faces <laughs> but for no <laughs> apparent reason and yeah um, I think the director said that it was cool that it was brilliant the fact that the camera guy I'm guessing that it was a guy uh, zoomed on people's faces so was it his first day and like he realized Maybe. Like, oh, cool, cool experiment let's do it again <laughs> Zoom even more on Tahara Him. Speaking of Tahara Him, I they did him so dirty in this movie. Uh, it's the villain. Ah, oh, the villain. Okay. He could like Tahar is a brilliant actor. He could play like a villain in the most perfect way. I don't know if you watched The Serpent. It is this uh, movie about this serial killer. It's a true story, and he played that serial killer. And he is very he has this very menacing look without even doing anything. And I feel like he didn't even get the chance to to act in this one because I don't know, like I, I I didn't even recognize him until I looked up the cast because his acting was so bad that I, I I just I did not recognize him. You didn't expect him to be a professional actor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was probably his first movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, there was this scene in the beginning of the movie. Uh, the the guy who works with Dakota, what's his name? Uh, ben. Ben. Yeah. Um, he was doing CPR and he was doing CPR with like two fingers. And I, or like, I'm not an expert, but I had like a CPR training like many years ago. And I'm pretty sure that you don't do CPR that way. And it was like, like the, the guy was that he was doing CPR to was dying and he was so chill about it and like talking to Dakota and like just pushing on the guy with the other hand and it was so weird. See, that's the thing about being a paramedic or a firefighter. I think they're so used to it that it becomes dehumanizing. So maybe maybe that's what they were trying to show that, oh yeah, he's dying, but it's okay. We see that every day. <laughs> yeah, he's dying, you know. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know how we got to this in low yeah. place of movies. I just, I'm, I, it makes me almost want to retire from watching movies. I'm like, maybe we've already seen the good ones and there's nothing left. Everything that's coming out right now is just bad. Um, it makes me want to watch more movies because it makes me want to like keep watching until I find this one movie again that actually it makes me feel something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it has the opposite effect on me, which is why I go I, I went back to watching Grey's Anatomy and like I keep rewatching normal people after sun and it's because I just wanna feel something. I just wanna I just wanna be convinced that like art still exists and, and to me this is not art. This is not what we go to the movies for, what people who go to movie schools go there for and yeah. it doesn't translate people's passion and motivation um yeah it, it's it's very it's sad like you you, you ha they had so many opportunities it's an 80 million budget movie 80 million yeah that's what that's what i've heard that's what i've read actually but why, why wouldn't you hire the best people on this project? Come on, like it is set, it is set up for success. It already has it like fans. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, eighty million for that movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like if you look up after Sun, I'm pretty sure they had a way smaller budget. You know something else I noticed is when she went to Peru, 
again, so fast. Like, how, how did she get, like, she just dropped the girls with Ben and she went to Peru. We didn't even see, like, writing that is in Peru, because usually with Marvel movies, yeah. when they go from a country to another, there's, like, a scene of a plane flying, of something written, just, like, to set up the ambiance mm -hmm. that we're in a new country. And with that movie, I feel like the transitions in that movie, the context were missing big time. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like when you're looking at, you know, the press and like the promo of the movie and you see that the lead actor hasn't watched their own right, movie. Right, right. It's already a red flag. Oh like, I don't know if you saw that, but I saw this interview with Dakota just saying that she, she's not planning exactly. on watching the movie. And um, yeah, sometimes movies for actors are just work. You know, I wonder if they want to make bad movies and they want it to be known that they're making bad movies so that I, I wonder if that's a new marketing technique like let's make bad movies so that people will go watch them and then talk badly about them because they know they're making bad movies Do you movies. mean for actors? For actors, for producers, for everybody Is that a new for, selling point? For actors, I feel like sometimes it's like you need a job Yeah Because even if you are the you're already successful like you need to keep working but see and, and, and you like if you have a marvel opportunity you expect it to yeah. work and you give it a chance so it's understandable but um i don't know that breaks my heart because yeah. being an actress in a marvel movie is has always been on top of my bucket list like to me being a marvel movie actor was something so incredible and now yeah. like, like you're describing it it's just like having a job and it makes sense you know i agree with you mm -hmm. maybe that's what it was for dakota johnson but like it's marvel you know it should mean more than that you know but yeah it's sad yeah it's but it's also um the fact that to me marvel is sinking right now and it's slowly losing their reputation and it's not producing anything great is given a chance for other productions to yeah. to be great and to, uh, this is something that I'm excited for because you know when you have some like something good come could come out of this terrible mess and um, yeah I feel like the audience should expect a certain standards for the movies that they watch even if it's just movies and it's just entertainment but um, it's so much more than that. It's it's never just movies. And mm -hmm. movies they change lives in my opinion. It's it's art. It shouldn't be just, mm -hmm. you know. It's sad that we we just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, um the other actresses who are supposed to be the other two superheroes who in Sydney were so forgettable. Um they were just there. I mean, I Sydney was okay. There were so many weird scenes. I mean, like the scene that where where they were on in this diner was weird. They were yeah. dancing on a table without the music. The toxic music was in the background, but like during the scene, why were they on the table dancing? It, it's just weird. It's just the whole movie doesn't make sense. And then I'm happy that I left. <laughs> I'm glad that I left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye! Bye. <laughs>